we get a fucking ass <laughs> But of all the Ivy Leaguers on the show, the dumbest of them all has to be Little Karma. Hey, Daniel. Ray Abruzzo here. I played Little Carmine on The Sopranos. Hey, listen, I gotta tell you something. Kino, certain uh, friend of ours, I don't wanna mention any names. Okay, Matt, he reached out to me, did kind of an end run around you, Kino, because he thought that you and I should have a little bit of a sit down. Now, Danny boy, I don't wanna call it a sit down due to the inclement negative implications, so let's just call this a meeting of mine, shall we? The purpose of which, can you guess? Yeah, I have to give you some credit. You did a nice job pontificating and whatnot about certain uh, aspects and certain incidents that had expired during the course of the run of The Sopranos that you felt the need to talk about and maybe give your opinion about certain things. I was very impressed with quite a bit of it. You seem to have done a lot of research. I have a couple of bones to pick, a couple of, you know, like a sticking post. You know, I agree, Little Carmine didn't always use the best words, but to say that that makes him the stupidest, I mean, everybody thinks Tony's the big genius, you know, he's the smart guy. Who's the guy that said uh, AJ makes a molehill out of everything? Or that he had an alba albacore around his neck? Come on. Every one of them used as many malaprops as Little Carmine. And I also want to add, you did have some insights and inputs, as we like to say, about um, his uh, awareness of who he is and where he fits in the world, and also his understanding of other people's predicaments. I mean, when he has to sit down with Tony to try to go to see Uncle Phil, he's very sensitive to Tony about Tony's situation with, uh, with AJ, though, what he's going through. I mean, he's the most sympathetic. Everybody else does a lot of ass-kissing with those situations. But little Carmine is seriously, seriously interested and caring about what Tony's going through emotionally. And also at the scene at the golf course, the mellifluous box scene, beautifully written by Terry Winter, I might say. Um, there's a lot of insight in there. You picked up on a lot of it. I will give you that. But, I mean, there were subtle things. Like they ordered different things. You notice that. Philly cheesesteak. Seared ahi mixed greens. He orders an Arnold Palmer iced tea. No, you know what? Make that an Arnold Palmer. I always enjoyed these, but it never occurs to me to order one. Why does he do that? Because he realized he's sensitive enough to have noticed the rift, the distance between him and Tony in their lifestyles and everything, and he found common ground, even if it's in a glass of Arnold Palmer. So, you know, Arnold Palmer, very famous golfer, he invented this drink and he called it the uh, Arnold Palmer. All right, that's neither here nor there. But I just want to say, with all the work that you're doing, these, these videos that you're making, you're on the precipice of an enormous crossroads. I will give you that, Kino. All right, my friend, I did appreciate everything you said. I don't know if I agree with your conclusion, but I think uh, basically you're right. I will say he's not the stupidest of all of them, please. He, he has more insight and about life and his position in the world and how other people view him and what's important and what's not important. So let's face it, he might not use the right words all the time, but he's the smartest of the group. Still living happy, beautiful Nicole. You know, she's waiting for him with the drink, light dinner if he jumps in the pool naked. What's better than that? All right, Kino, Daniel, you keep up the good work. Most importantly, Kino. Enjoy your success.